For Texas Parks and Wildlife, for game wardens, you know, we've been involved for search and rescue and disaster response for more than a century. A lot of search and rescue situation, game wardens are usually the first ones to show up. Through the last century, Texas game wardens have evolved in the way that they deal with and respond to natural disasters. Training is what allows these officers to respond and save lives. Every day is a training day. You train enough so that it, you don't have that excitement factor. It's a pretty exciting thing to jump out of a helicopter, you know, just with a thin cable attached to you. But you gotta overcome that so that you can be calm and, and do your job appropriately and help people that are really in need. We train together all the time. We're prepared because of this, this teamwork and this training. Everybody has a specific job that they have to do, and if they get lax or make a mistake, we could all die. Teamwork is the utmost important. With the helicopter now, with certain situations, we can save people where we couldn't even just, you know, a year or two ago. The guys that we work with are just outstanding. Our instructors, our rescue swimmers are just phenomenal. They're always going above and beyond, uh, which is a lot of why they were selected to be part of the program. For about two years, we've been uh, preparing for a disaster like Harvey. Just a few months prior, we had trained for almost that scenario. You never train for something as big as Harvey. These helicopters have had a rough one the last few days. When you consider the fact that they've been flying through torrential rains and high winds, all to bring people who are stranded to safety. Just hang right there. Don't let go of that, OK? I got you. These people were out of electricity for two, three days, you know, out of food, out of water, you know, need of medical attention. We knew Harvey was going to be a big deal when it started to form off the Yucatan. We didn't really know exactly how hard it was going to hit or where it was going to hit. The bad thing about a hurricane like that is a lot of times the weather's so horrible that you can't really go anywhere in a helicopter. So it was a pretty good chore just getting this helicopter down to Houston. As soon as we could the next day, we were able to launch. I mean, as a game warden, we have to be fairly inventive. We're kind of a jack of all trades. I mean, we're plumbers, we're electricians, we're mechanics. One in Houston where we had a family that was in a two-story house and uh, they were on a little balcony and they couldn't actually get up to the roof. Our, our helicopter crew actually set me on top of the house and I was able to coordinate with the people that were stuck there and actually get a box spring from the mattress under their bed and use it as a ladder and help lift them up onto the roof. And got them two first responders there in Houston. Uh, she actually gave me a, a pretty good hug, made all your efforts worth it. In Hurricane Harvey, the aviation group, along with our tactical operations group and rescue swimmers, working with Texas Parks and Wildlife and DPS, rescued 114 people. In fact, many of those rescues were life-saving. Trust my life with any one of these individuals over here, and, and they trust me with theirs, and you have to have that. I mean, at the end of the day, I know they have families, they have kids, they have loved ones, and so do I, and I want to go home at the end of the day. For Texas Parks and Wildlife, uh, I see the future of search and rescue and hoisting limitless. You know, there's a serious need for it as well, which is nice to be there to help. The sky's the limit.